Hey everybody, so if what's going on in your yard is anything like what's going on in my yard, you are spending a lot of time doing some of this right now, watering. I think this is just the time of the year when gardening shifts over to a little bit of weeding and a lot of watering. So um, watering is one of those interesting things. You know, one of the very first blog posts I ever wrote about was the search for a decent watering wand because I was so sick of water dripping down my arm when I lifted it up in the air. And honestly, the search for great watering tools still continues, but I thought I'd go around and show you how I water everything. Not the actual putting the water on the plants part, but what I use and the methods I use to get the water where it needs to go. Um, because I do get a lot of questions about watering. And I don't know about you guys, but I am always searching for a better way to do things. So maybe you'll like some of the things that I show you, and maybe you will have some suggestions to share with me for ways to improve the watering situation here. So we're gonna start from simplest, and we're gonna go to most complicated. Okay, so I told you we were gonna start with the simplest method. Well, here we are at my rain barrel. You hardly ever see this because it's actually kind of hard to get to, which is one of the problems with it. But this is off the corner of the garage. We have just shortened the gutter. Um, this one little gutter on this um, garage will fill up this rain barrel um, in minutes in a decent rainstorm. Um, so we just have shortened the gutter to come straight into here. It flows right into here. I do have a hose connected to it and there is a spigot. This was a pretty cheap ray barrel that we picked up at one of the big box stores. Um, and we do have it set up on a log. That helps because obviously this rain barrel is gravity fed. Um, so I can run that hose and water sort of you know, kind of comes out to it. But it's important over here because this garden over by the garage is difficult to reach with other hoses in the yard. So most of these plants are watered with this rain barrel. And I will tell you, there's no doubt in my mind that rain water is the best thing you can water plants with. Plants grow so well over here. I am convinced it's because of the rain water. I mean, I think if you could set up a proper rain barrel system that had either a pump or um, things were set up higher so you'd get more gravity feed because that's the one real problem with this is that it really trickles out and I have to make sure that the end of the hose is lower than the top of the hose or else no water comes out. So still, I think that rain barrels and collecting rainwater is a great way to water if you can. Um, I would like to expand and improve upon this system. To be honest with you, it's just one of those things that we haven't gotten to. But if you have a great rain barrel system, I would love to hear about it because I think they're great and I think it could be improved upon uh, quite a bit. Um, it's great for the plants and why not use the water that's falling on your roof anyway? So when we're talking about simple watering methods, a watering can is obviously right up there. I think every gardener needs a watering can. I think a lot of gardeners have this specific watering can. It's my favorite. I've had two of these now. Um, this is the second one. The first one split on me. This is from Gardener Supply. I'm pretty sure they probably still have it. It's a pretty popular item there. I will link to that. Um, it does come with a watering rose. Do you know what you do with that watering hose? You take that off and then you put that somewhere and you probably never look at it again. Honestly, I can't be bothered with watering roses. It takes too much time. They inevitably get clogged. And I'm like when I'm using this watering can, it is about efficiency because a lot of times what I'm doing here is fertilizing with this. And so if I have to fertilize all my plants two gallons at a time it's going to take a while um, i also do use this for uh, watering containers that are farther away or i don't feel like bringing out a hose to water them or something but the key here is size it's two gallons um, and then here's my little tip the rest of you might know this but it took me years to figure this out carry this backwards when you carry it with the spout facing backwards it doesn't shoot out all over your leg i don't know why that is it just is so water and can, this is the one I love. Um, it's nothing fancy, it's plastic, but it's big and it does the job. Okay, let's talk watering wands. You gotta have a good watering wand. Um, everybody needs these. I prefer these long ones, although we have um, just short watering, whatever you call those things, heads, the short version of this. But I like the long one, you don't have to bend over. The goal when you're watering is to get the water at the roots of your plant, not on the leaves of your plant. So this way you can water plants that are lower to the ground without bending over. Uh, this is a dram. I really like the dram ones. Um, 
they just seem to work really well. They come in a bunch of colors. I have tried a number of different Dram ones, including ones with different uh, water breakers on them and professional series and the whole thing. Honestly, I don't find a ton of difference between them, but I do like this right here. This is the, um, this is just the lever to turn it off and on. You don't have to hold it on. So I do like this. I think they call this a thumb control. And this is the latest one I got, um, which I like because you don't often find this on the um, water wands. It's got all the different selections for how you'd like your water to come out. So um, I am a fan of that, even though I mostly just use the rain and the shower and sometimes the stream, but I still like all the options. So watering wands, this is my pick. Now, so you're gonna wanna swap out your watering wand for other watering accessories. Um, uh, soaker hoses, sprinklers, other watering wands or sprayer nozzle type things. So you got to have a quick connect. I adore quick connects. I've tried every quick connect on the market, I swear. And this is my favorite. This is the Gilmore quick connect. Uh, it's first of all, I believe this is brass. So brass is usually good with watering stuff. And it's got these like rubber gripper things. So the best part on this quick connect is that it stops the hose. There's a valve there, so even though the hose is on, you can quick connect this without turning off the water at the hose or having to kink your hose. Let me, it, it doesn't come off super easy, but it does come off. And I have a sore wrist right now, so. Ah! <laughs> So there might be some overspray. The point is, is that it turns the water off. Maybe just don't point it in your face when you're trying to do that. In any case, it works. They click on easily. Um, I like the little gasket part. They work, but they don't leak. As long as you have them screwed on tight, they don't leak. I am all done with leaky stuff. It drives me nuts. Okay, so now that I'm a little bit dried off, let's talk about hoses. Um, I, will, I believe this is called a water right hose. I'm gonna put a link to this down there for you. Um, you guys, here's the deal with hoses. With hoses, you either get kink free and durable or light and prone to kinking and possibly doesn't last as long. This one is somewhere in the middle. It is light. It pushes out a fair amount of water. I believe this is the 5 8 inch one. And there's a skinnier version of this, I believe, which is what I have over at the vegetable garden. I believe it's drinking water safe. And I like, you guys, I like hoses that aren't ugly colors. I don't want a bright hose. I want a hose that blends in because here's the thing. I am a terrible hose coiler. In fact, I never do it. So if I'm gonna be looking at a hose, I want it to be a color that kind of blends in or doesn't look out of place. Here I've got the olive green color over in the vegetable garden. I've got the black one, they come in gray. I think fun colored hoses are great if that's your thing. For me, I don't wanna draw any attention to the fact that my hose is constantly laying around. Now, Mr. Much More Patient hates this hose because it's um, a little floppy. It doesn't kink easily, but it will kink. I mean, most hoses will kink. It doesn't kink easily, but it will. And it's a little difficult to coil. He would prefer a three quarter inch, big, fat, heavy duty hose. And there's no doubt about it. Those work great. And we have one of those on the back and I'll show you that hose too. The only problem with that is that they weigh a ton. And usually when he's watering something, he's just like taking it to one place and watering it. I'm dragging hoses all over this yard watering stuff. So for me, it's more important to have something light. Um, I do always though look for good end fittings. Um, you know, you want some solid, usually brass end fittings are great, but some kind of solid end fitting on it, cheap end fittings, you just know that thing is garbage. It's not gonna last long. I've had this hose for I think three years now. It's been doing really great. I have tried another hose, which I have connected to the um, rain barrel now, which is called the Perfect Hose. And for years, that really was the perfect hose. I loved it. That one almost got me a divorce. Mr. Much More Patient and I get along pretty well, but that hose was his nemesis. And I thought for the better of our betterment of our marriage, I should put that hose out of frequent usage. Two problems with that hose. A, 
it, and this is one of its selling points, it's impossible to kink it. You can actually park a car on top of it and the water won't stop, which is great until you really do need the water to stop and you can't kink a hose to stop the water. And B, it was impossible to coil. Now, speaking of coiling, let me show you our coiling system here. Okay, so you can't see it because the dahlias are growing up around it right now, but the hose bib on this side of the house, which is the main one we need, is right there. So it's right on the front of our house. So it makes it very difficult to store a hose attractively here. So I do run the hose behind all the dahlias here and I have it come out here and we have here just like a hose, I don't know what you call this, a hose bucket, a hose something. Anyway, that we coil the hose up in and it's fine and it's not unattractive. It kind of looks like a pot just sitting here. Um, but you do have to coil the hose in there. And as you know, hoses only want to go one way. And sometimes you have to um, put them under to coil them, if you know what I mean. So you do like a, um, you do a loop that goes on top and then you do a loop that's underneath it so that you don't create more kinks in the hose. Um, and that, when you pull this out of here, it doesn't exactly come out of here smoothly. So. I don't care for this method of storing my hose, but I do not want something ugly like a giant hose reel or a giant hose cart. I don't want anything ugly. If anyone has, I will pay good money for an attractive hose storage solution that allows the hose to come out easily and is easy to coil that would look fine at the front of my house. So I'm looking for that. So I did want to show you one other thing before we leave the front of the house here. Um, it's a little difficult to see, but here behind, <laughs> hidden behind the dahlias is a Gilmer, a Gilmore hose timer. I've used a lot of hose timers and for a simple one to run a hose or a simple drip system off of, this is my favorite because it's extremely easy to set and extremely easy to run outside of the setting without screwing everything up. Um, so this works really, really well for us. It does take a couple of AA batteries and that's it, but this works really well. So that timer runs to drip tubing um, that I do have running through this bed just because this bed is all annuals and it's shaded um, by the eaves so it doesn't get a lot of rainwater. So this is just the kind of half inch drip tubing with holes every 12 inches, I believe. Um, and we just, I run this for 45 minutes um, every morning. The window box has a self-watering reservoir, which is what I've always used. But because it's so high, it is a little bit problematic to get into, to fill up the reservoir, which is on the far corner of it. So this year I have run drip tubing um, from the drip tubing that runs at the base up with just a skinny white quarter inch line up into the thing the window, the thing being the window box. Um, and then I've got the small quarter inch drip tubing inside of there. Um, it's, it's hard to figure out how much water to give that. And because it's connected to this other system, it's hard to regulate that amount of water. So I do have a little valve here where I can turn it off or on and it's been off for a couple of days now. Um, so I just have to, I still have to kind of manually watch that. Okay. More hose talk. So connected, this is just another dram. Uh, water wand, but doesn't have the selector on top. Okay, here is a light Gilmore hose. Now, Gilmore sent me this hose to try this year, and I will tell you this, it is extremely light, It's and it's thicker than my other hoses, so you do push more water out of this, and it's just as light, if not lighter, than those hoses. Um, one of the ways they keep it light, though, is but there's plastic fittings on it. So, so far, those are working great. Um, whether those keep working great or not is another question. I think. Um, the other thing I would say about this is that it's very stretchy. So it's interesting when you pull it, sometimes it just stretches for a while before you actually move it anywhere. Um, but so far so good on this hose. Re I would say this is a good option um, if you're looking for a light hose and uh, you're okay with the you know plastic fittings on it. So we have three hoses connected together, three 50 foot hoses connected together over here because this is the hose that we drag all the way over to water some gardens over by the driveway. Now this is Mr. Much More Patience hose. This is a big, heavy, thick, I don't know where we got it, 
We've got two of them connected. They weigh a ton, but I will tell you, they don't kink. They push water around like you wouldn't believe. They are extremely durable. We've had these for many, many years. So there is something to be said about a durable hose. Um, it's just not my favorite because it's really heavy. Okay, so here's our new sprinkler. Um, we had to buy a new sprinkler because we can't find the old sprinkler and the easiest way to find the old sprinkler is to buy a new sprinkler. Um, this is just one of those flippy head ones. I'm sure there is a name for that. Um, but we got it on a tripod this year, which I like a lot. It goes quite far. Um, you have a fair amount of adjustment in how you can shoot the water. I mean, let's be honest here. Sprinkling is my least favorite way of watering anything. I never want to be watering the leaves of a plant. It's, especially this can be quite forceful. So I try to avoid this, but at the same time, it's simply the easiest way to water a large area if you just need to get some moisture onto the ground. And it's certainly fine for grass, although we almost never water grass here. So this is our new sprinkler. I'll link to that. Um, we just got it. I can't say a lot about it yet. I love the tripod portion of this though. Um, and I, the sprinkler head is actually a zinc one. They make a brass version of this. It was sold out. We needed a sprinkler, so we got this. So, so far so good. But like I said, sprinkling is my absolute least favorite way of watering anything. I only do it when I absolutely have to. Okay, so now we're in the vegetable garden and here's the most complicated watering system we have. We do have drip running to the vegetable beds in here and I will tell you, it's an, it's an enormous lifesaver. Um, it allows me to leave my garden for a week and not really worry about it. Um, I mean, obviously I still have to have someone deal with containers and things, but they never have to come to the vegetable garden or worrying about watering over here. Or if I get busy at work, the vegetable garden can just manage itself, which is great. Now, I can't show you how we did it. And in fact, we never did a video when we hooked this all up. Um, and that's because I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't want to show you a video of how to build a system. But I will just tell you that, and I will walk you around and kind of show you things. But basically we laid it all out on paper first. We've got four zones running in here um, and we only switched them into zones so that there would be enough water pressure because the way we get water over to this vegetable garden is that we run it all the way from the house. We did not have a spigot built over here. We just kind of created one by running a hose over here and made sort of a fake spigot that we run everything from off of that. And so because of that, we didn't think we could run all the beds at one time. So half of the beds are on on one cycle as well as along the edges half of the beds are on another cycle and then we've got a third cycle running across the back and we don't use that fourth cycle at this point um, we could add that in if we needed to but we don't use that at this point okay so here's where the water comes in at the top of this post this is just a post that we sunk in the ground um, to hook everything up to and so we've got a lot of hose clamps there there's a lot of pressure running here and then we go down to a splitter and the left goes off to just the hose that I have in here and the right goes to the zones and the timers and all this now this is an orbit system and this is the timer I'm gonna tell you right now I hate this timer hate it um, it was not cheap I hate it it's extremely hard to program extremely hard to make sure that it's actually working and ensure that it's actually running the way it's supposed to so I am considering replacing this with a rain cloud system that would work off of wireless. I'm just not sure the wireless from our house is strong enough to reach out here because I would like to read it on my phone screen and be able to adjust it easily without having to lay down on the ground and monkey around with this dial. Anyway, as you can see, all these, all these um, half inch tubes run underground and they run under the gravel now, of course you can't see anything but we ran that half inch tube all the way across here along each of the beds and down and down these beds and they're all inside of pvc tubes so that i can't accidentally sink a shovel into them or damage them in some way because digging them up would be problematic to say the least then at the base of each bed again you won't be able to see this because this all happens underneath the gravel I have run up additional tube which comes up to the top of the beds and so I've got this half inch tube that runs each bed has its own on and off 
which is nice because obviously you can turn off the beds individually. And then I've just got the half inch tubing that leads to the quarter inch drip tubing. Um, and I do three in the big beds and two in the small beds. So that's how we run this. So that's how we laid the whole system out. Um, I will tell you, it's one of those things I found drip tubing to be extremely difficult to figure out um, because there's all these numbers and how do you know how many tubes to put in and how much pressure you need and all these things. And um, at some point what I ended up doing was finding a pre-made raised bed kit online. And then I just sort of worked my statistics off of that to figure out what I needed. I don't think that's the right way necessarily to do it, but it sort of worked for us. The system has been working now for two years. So I think we got it right. The only thing that's hard for me is to figure out how to dial in, how to run the water. Now I'm running these zones for an hour and a half each, which seems like a lot to me. And yet I don't feel like anything's getting too much water. And sometimes I feel like it's not getting enough. So my problem with drip tubing um, is to figure out how to dial in how long to run it for. Um, maybe that's something that just comes with experience. And I know there are mathematical equations that figure this all out. Um, you know what I do sometimes is I'll take an empty cat food can and I'll stick it under the drip tube to fill up and see how much I'm getting in terms of essentially inches from each emitter, which helps me at least envision it in my mind. That is about as simple as it gets, but um, otherwise it just gets a little overwhelming and confusing. Um, I would say I would do everything. I would do everything exactly the same way in this garden again. I'm very happy with it other than the timer, which I absolutely hate, as I've mentioned. Um, I do love the option to turn off the beds when I don't need them. Um, and the one thing I would say is that one of the things I do because of the way I have my drip tubing set up is that when I plant, well, here, let me turn you around. Although I'm hiding behind it a little bit here, as you can tell, I've got my garlic planted on this half of the bed. On the other half of the bed, I've got onions. And if you see potatoes in here, those are potatoes I clearly forgot to harvest last year because this is the bed I grew potatoes in last year. But in any case, as you know, with garlic, you want to turn the water off to it um, before you harvest it for a bit so that those um, cloves can harden down a little bit. So I always put those things at the end of the bed. So what I can do is take the small drip tubes and just sort of fold them back to the rest of the bed. So I can continue running the water in this bed because I split my beds in half and half. I can continue running water to this bed for the onions, but I can cut the garlic when I need to just by moving the drip tubing around. Okay, you guys, that's the watering report from here. I'll be honest with you, we've been pretty lucky. We've been getting, we had a lot of rain and then we've been getting these little rainstorms. So it's not been a lot of pressure, but it's hot. So the containers need a lot of attention and I am spending a lot of time on the other end of a hose these days. Uh, the good news about that is that you can uh, use your hose one-handed. So you can have a cocktail in one hand or your cup of coffee or your phone, maybe do your email, whatever works. I hope you guys have found some watering solutions that work well for you. Uh, please let me know if you have found some great watering tools. Um, I am always looking to improve my watering situation and share that with everybody else when I find something great. All right, have a great one, you guys. We'll talk soon.